Hi YouTube and Blade Forums. This is John here again. Today I'm here to review my Benchmade Model 485, the Valet series. Um, this is a great little EDC knife. I consider it to be a miniature version of the Benchmade 940-1. Uh, it's, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite knives. I, I think it's almost an ideal size for EDC. Um, measurement wise here, we have a knife that is uh, 6.69 inches in overall length. Um, closed, we're looking at 3.73 uh, inches. And then the blade length, we're looking at 2.96 inches. And for me, for everyday carry, that's just perfect because at a length of under 3 inches, it doesn't intimidate most people. You know, most people can see it and not get afraid. Um, but also, at 2.96 inches, it meets the legal requirements to carry it in places like San Francisco, California. Uh, which is a place I frequent uh, on a somewhat regular basis. And so when I go to San Francisco, I do not carry my 940-1 there. I carry my Benchmade Valet, and I like it a lot. So on the Valet, and by the way, this is going to kind of be a mostly a Valet review, but also kind of a comparison with the uh, 940 here, which I had reviewed in a previous video. So the Benchmade Valet here has G10 handles, and it's one of the most beautiful G10 scales I've personally ever seen. Um, you can see it's a very nice light gray, light grayish bluish color, um, and it has a nice little white kind of wood grain type pattern in it. Um, the patterns vary from knife to knife because uh, they're very, it's just random on the sheets of G10 they cut. You can see on the back side here, you don't see the white pattern as much, but you still see the pattern. Okay, so the G10 on this knife, it's, uh, it's very smooth, which is how I like it. It's not slick. It has a little, very slight texture to it, almost like a wood grain again. Um, but it's, it's got enough grip that you're not going to have problems using it to cut anything. It's not going to slip out of your hands uh, on regular type, light to medium use. And also it's going to, because of how smooth it is, it's going to slip into your pocket rather easily and it's not going to be a pocket shredder. Okay, so and it, it provides good retention for the clip here. So when you slide this into your pocket, the, the, it holds in the pocket. It doesn't move around. It stays where you put it. It doesn't lift up. It doesn't come out. So the G10, it, it works overall very well. Great for handling and great for storing in the pocket. Okay. Uh, if you notice on the knife handle here, it's an open construction. You can see right through it. And you can see it's uh, steel liners, 100% uh, coverage here from front to back. It's not partial liners, okay? Uh, they're milled out, as you can see here, for weight savings. But uh, it is a complete stainless steel liner, and that makes for a very strong knife for how small it is. On the back end of the, of the knife, you have a G10 backspacer here, if you can see, and it has a slight texture to it. And that aids in opening and closing the knife via the access lock. And it also gives you a little bit more grip when you're bearing down on heavy cuts, okay? Benchmade lists this as a gentleman's knife, um, but also something that can handle slightly heavy use. And that's exactly how I would classify it myself. Uh, one a couple, a couple issues with the, uh, the knife as far as handling goes. Uh, the clip here, a little smaller than your typical Benchmade. Um, it's not quite as easy to get on your pocket as other clips, and that's just because of the size. But it's comparable to other similar small clips on small knives. However, the Benchmade does have a hiccup. If you can see the two screws set in there behind the clip, if you look at this angle, they protrude a little bit. Okay, now that prevents the knife from sitting all the way down in your pocket sometimes. Um, when I first got it, when I would put it in my pocket, it would catch almost every single time. It was annoying. Uh, it would leave about this much of the, the, the clip and the handle out of your pocket, but it would still have uh, very sufficient uh, pocket retention, so it wasn't coming out. It was just annoying not to have it seat in all the way, okay? But now I've used my knife more, it seems to have broken in. Either this or my pocket has broken in. And so now it slides over my pocket probably nine out of 10 times without an issue. So, but that's gonna vary based on what kind of clothes you're wearing, obviously. But otherwise, I like how deep it carries in the pocket. As you can see, the tip goes, the clip goes all the way to the end. So the knife is not visible when it's in your pocket, okay? Uh, another concern on this knife that may be a problem for some people is this has smaller access lock hardware than the standard Benchmade knife has. It's maybe about two-thirds of the normal size of an access lock. Okay, they had to scale it down to make this knife so small, obviously. 
here it is next to the Benchmade 940. So you can see the difference in the access locks here. Okay. Also on the thumb studs, you can see on these thumb studs, a little bit smaller compared to your standard Benchmade thumb stud here. Okay. So that's one difference. It can make it a little bit more difficult to deploy the knife and to actuate the Benchmade access lock. If you're someone with very large hands, this knife may not be feasible for you. Uh, for me, it wasn't really much of a problem when I first got it. It took a little bit of getting used to, but after about a day, I had it all down and I have no problems opening and closing it, for me personally. I have medium-sized hands and I wear medium-sized gloves, so if that helps you any. So for me, it works fine, but if you have larger hands, you may find an issue with it. Okay, so um, the next thing, the knife is actually built pretty heavy. Like I said, it has the full liners, but also the, the pivot bolt here, it's the same size as on the 940-1, which is a Torx uh, number 10. So it has a pretty strong pivot. And also it has a pretty, uh, a pretty strong uh, stock pin as well. Uh, it doesn't look like it's as big as the 940-1, but it definitely seems to be oversized for this knife. Uh, one thing you'll notice in this uh, view here, you'll see no jimping on this knife. Everything is smooth, okay? Um, but it's grippy. The little cutout here on the grip it is for the, the thumb stud, which helps you get into there to open it. You can use the meat of your thumb or you can use the tip of your uh, finger now, okay? But it also kind of doubles as a, a finger stop here. It's a nice place to rest your finger. <clears throat> so this is a typical grip I'll use on the knife. But with the ergonomics, it's just a plain slab of knife handle. <clears throat> Pretty straight, no contours really. A little swell on the back you can see here. Uh, it makes for a good grip. Not the best in ergonomics, but there's no deficiency in the ergonomics on this knife either. The only problem might be if you have larger hands. But with the thickness and the narrowness of this handle, it actually is conducive to all different types of grips. Um, here, 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 here. Uh, peeling an apple. It, it's really just like the 940, very similar. I, I only give it slightly lower marks just because it's smaller and it's not as comfortable as the 940, but I haven't had any problems with handling it. So the steel on this one is the M390. The steel comes from Austria. For me personally, this is one of the best overall knife steels for EDC carry pocket knives. It has very good edge retention. It's very tough and um, it takes a very fine edge while also being highly corrosion resistant. It's probably one of the most corrosion resistant steels that you can get besides the specialty ones like uh, H1 and LC200. But edge retention on here is a, a solid step above S30 and a slight step below the S90V. Okay. Um, but what I like about this one is to me it sharpens about the equivalent of S30 but with edge retention that's closer to S90. This knife has a very fine grain from what I can tell from sharpening. I can get a very good edge on it. Uh, better than my S90. And um, Also when sharpening it, I don't have as many problems with the burr. So getting rid of the burr is actually very easy on here. It doesn't form that much of a burr compared to the S30 and the S90 and the VG10. And so I gave it higher ranks for uh, maintenance and sharpening than I than you would think you would have for an M390 knife, which is a really strong steel. As you can see on here, this is a very thin blade stock. This is actually 0.099 inches thick. It's a flat grind, not a full flat grind. It comes down to a relatively thin point, not as thin as it could be for a knife with this thin of blade stock. Um, they have to retain strength somehow for a three inch blade. But it tapers up gradually, not as gradual as I would like, it's not the perfect slicer like the Delica, but you know what, it's better than the 940 by a little bit. And it slices through a lot of things really easily. And it has a little bit of bite, not as much bite as uh, S90V, but it has a slightly aggressive uh, cutting edge to it. Um, as far as slicing goes, I gave high rankings on this for cutting and slicing ability because the knife uh, has a nice shape. It's good for piercing cuts, it's good for slicing cuts, and you can get into tight spaces for, uh, you know, you know, tight cuts that are in small spaces that are hard to get into. Um, I also like how the tip on here is a drop point. If you can see on the video, the tip drops just slightly, which is, I think is ideal for an EDC knife. It gives you a little bit of protection, say if you're cutting a bracelet off your skin here. Uh, unlike an, just a really sharp one on here, on the uh, 
the, the 0450 by ZT, this just digs into your skin if you try to cut a bracelet off, like if you go to the bar. But to give you an idea of the precision cuts that this, uh, this little guy can do, here's a small little piece of uh, sisal rope. This is a one third uh, of a strand of sisal rope here, okay? So look how small this is. I'll make a small little loop here. And you can see I can get into the loop. So loop, and I'm getting in with the knife. And it just cuts right through, okay? I'm careful not to knock over my tripod. Now here's a bigger piece of sisal rope, the full size, okay? Now here's how I'm gripping with my finger right by the, uh, the cutout for the thumb stud. With my thumb over the back here, and I just slice right through, okay? So it goes through pretty easy. Not as easy as um, the ZT, which has a longer blade, which makes it a little easier only for the leverage issue. Uh, not quite as good as the Sage, but very, very good for its size. And now cuts that I like to do, this is my sharpness test. Uh, I don't normally do it after making several cuts, but if you can see on here, it's still going through the paper towel. Um, pretty clean. Um, it's, not, it's not really bad at all. It's still cutting the paper towel. Um, here's a piece of, uh, what should we call it, phone book paper here. So I'll try to slice on here. Sorry about that. My bad. So there we go. So you can see it's, it's slicing cleanly. Those first cuts were my mistake. But you can see how good it's cutting here. Very nice and clean. And that's after making several cuts. I did about 30 cuts on that sisal rope before I made this video here, okay? So there's that knife. Here's a piece of cardboard, just a little thin piece of cardboard. And slicing through it here. All right, sorry my video cut out there. But uh, I was cutting cardboard. And you can see it, it cuts through the cardboard quite nicely. Uh, so without too much resistance there, okay? And I'll cut a piece of printer paper just for the heck of it. So you can see it's cutting that nicely. It has a pretty, pretty nice cutting ability. Um, it's not smooth like a razor, not aggressive like S90, but somewhere in between. And this is still cutting these uh, mediums here after doing quite a bit of cuts. I haven't sharpened this for about mm, maybe a week ago. And so that's that. So as far as uh, maintenance and sharpening goes, it's very easy to clean this out because you have an open handle here. You can just blow uh, and get all the lint out of here just by blowing through it. Also very easy to lubricate because it's open. And also on the M390 steel, I gave it higher marks than one might expect because this actually sharpens relatively easily. Um, to me, it sharpens about the same as S30V. Um, but what I like better about this is I don't have as much issues getting rid of the burr. On this one, the burr doesn't put up much of a fight like it does on S30 and S90. Um, I don't have to spend as much time doing very light touches towards the end of the sharpening process. Okay. So here's my ratings I come up with for this knife here. Okay. Um, for carrying, so pocket carry, drawing out of the pocket, and deploying it, I give it a 3.5. As far as um, carrying it in the pocket goes, it's really a perfect five because it's so light and so narrow in the pocket. You can still easily put your phone in your pocket, okay? And you can get your hand in there, your full hand in there when you have this very easily. But it lost points because of deployment, okay? Just because it has slightly smaller access lock and slightly smaller thumb studs than normal. It takes just a little bit more um, precision to open it, okay? Maybe a little bit more thought process. Then also because of the clip because the clip doesn't always slide in all the way. Sometimes it leaves the very top uh, exposed, which I haven't found any problem with the edge retent the uh, pocket retention. It stays in there. It hasn't fallen out. But that because of that, I had to dock at some points. 3.5 out of 5. Slicing ability, I actually uh, increased the score on this. Uh, it's, it's doing better than I thought it was initially. So I would say slightly better than the uh, Benchmade 940, but not quite as good as the uh, Spyderco Delica or the Sage 3. Ergonomics, I give it a 3 out of 5. Uh, it's a very average handle. Um, not uncomfortable and not super comfortable either. Just in between. Sufficient enough to get the job done. Um, and it's a really plain handle without any kind of crazy design contours. So you can get, it's a very neutral grip, so you can do a lot of different types of grips on here quite comfortably. So overall I give it 3 out of 5 just because it's a little smaller um, and it's a little harder to grip for really heavy cuts. 
Uh, as far as cutting and edge performance and use, um, like I showed you earlier, it gets into you know small tight areas very easily, like as you can see there. As far as puncturing, it has a good tip. It punctures very easily. Okay, and um, it's got the paper wet. And uh, as far as using it, um, it, it's very easy to use. It, you have a lot of control over the blade because the blade is really so close to uh, your fingers and your thumb. So you have a lot of precise control over this. I just think it's an ideal type knife for a regular EDC for non-hard use. But even hard use in a pinch, you know. So I give it 4 out of 5. The only reason it lost a point really is just because the blade is a little short. It doesn't cut through the apple as easily as I like because on a full size apple um, you start to run into problems with the apple uh, hitting the thumb stud a little because it is after all slightly under three inch blade okay but that's you know that's just part of the design so it just goes with the territory okay and then maintenance I guess the higher mark um, because the M390 steel was not as hard to sharpen as I thought it would be uh, significantly easier than the S90V and actually about the same as S30 if not slightly easier than my S30 um, and then also because of the open handle design so that just makes it very easy to keep clean keep it lint free and keep it oiled and lubricated so overall 18 and a half out of 25 is what I rank it uh, that comes out to 74 cent, uh, percent which is a very high rating uh, better than average Benchmade 940 came out with 86 which is my highest rated knife so far uh, so I will continue with these reviews I'll post the reviews on my other knives and um, I have some cut tests with these I might post with cutting apples. Um, but that's that. Um, right after this, I will make a video comparing this and the 940 in detail. Uh, because I think they're very similar knives, and someone looking for EDC who doesn't do heavy cutting may want to consider the Valet over the, uh, the Benchmade 940. So that's it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, and let me know what you guys think. Thank you.